And welcome to the 15th edition of Ghana Talks, live from studio in Ghana and live from London, where is our colleague Jan Orsic. Jan, hi. Hello. What is weather about in, in London? The weather is uh, metal. <laughs> uh, heavy metal the... or just metal? I think it's quite heavy metal as well. <laughs> uh, yes, it's true. I'm at the meeting show. Uh, it is uh, the 10th edition of the meeting show. Uh, after two years of the virtual, non-existent virtual shows, to uh, finally a live version again. Uh, it feels amazing. The scene is actually very interesting. Uh, it resonates with uh, you know some of the debates we've had about IMAX a couple of months ago, and uh, it is a really big event. There's quite a lot of noise at the moment in the background uh, as lunch is uh, creeping up here. You know, everybody's kind of uh, getting louder. Uh, but yes, it's it's a very interesting event. Uh, it, today is the second day of the meeting show. Um, I can say that yesterday was busier uh, in number of meetings, a number of also just people dropping in. Uh, we are here. At, you can see Ljubljana Convention Bureau right behind me, written on the stand. We are working together with the uh, modern marketing. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so is, there, uh, is, is there anybody else from okay. Slovenia? Um, I see also Intours is there. And... Exactly, Intours is just next to us, uh, but that is the only the only Slovenian representation that I know of. Uh, so it makes sense. I must say that um, looking at our talks at IMAX, looking at this. Mm -hmm. uh, the purpose of events such as this is the networking, it's about meetings, it's about knowledge exchange. It's not about the stand fields, it's not about creating the biggest uh, stands and so on. Mm -hmm, because that mm -hmm. just drains a lot of financial power from the CVPs, from our providers. Uh, and also, it's just noise. You know, in a lot of ways, that is noise. And it's the meeting show is a very interesting case because you know now it's no longer a European show. <laughs> mm, it's, mm. Uh, and they are trying to position themselves uh, as a different kind of event. I was just attending a couple of uh, educationals, and I could say I can say the mm -hmm. education was very good the way it was designed. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is different. Um, it is different also in a way that uh, it's not just the meeting show. But it's actually yeah. three different events taking uh -huh. place at the same time. We have the business travel uh, exhibition mm -hmm. and we have the technology, uh, meeting technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they, they kind of put three different events, created one large event, uh, which attracts more people. Uh, mm -hmm. perhaps a little bit more crossover into other segments, not so many association, just association or just corporate buyers, but you see these business mm -hmm. buyers mm -hmm. a little bit. Some are also high-end FIT. Uh, and I think that's a good way because uh, for us, you know, the meeting show has always been the opportunity to meet the UK agencies, mm -hmm. meet the UK mm -hmm. buyers the approach to the market and i think that's very relevant and i think they're succeeding in this and jan how does it feel this new location because uh, this change excel is, is is doing a lot towards sustainability and uh, accessibility new lines are going there and so on how how does it feel actually to be at excel i could compare uh, the olympia location which is more central in a way it's in uh, west london uh, then to uh, Excel and I, I can say that I actually prefer this location. It's more accessible. It's easier to get to in a way. There's less traffic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, everybody's coming by train. Uh, the DLR comes here. The Victoria line comes mm -hmm. here. Um, they've really created a convention center that is connected from all sides. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this regard, it's really working well. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I saw some celebrity speakers on the on the lineup of the of the educational program, like Sebastian Co and uh, Sir, Sir Sebastian Co and some others. Uh, can you share some some thoughts about the program? You, you explained already a little bit, but a little bit more uh, deeper. Well, what is going on? Yeah. To be honest, I have the same issue as many of us have when we are, uh, you know, attending the exhibitions. My primary mission is the meetings. So uh, yesterday I was on the stand the entire day. Um, it was a very good day. It was a busy day. There was a lot of people who showed up. Mm -hmm. uh, today I got the opportunity after I finished my meetings before, um, you know, some people came a little bit early. So I uh, managed to uh, do a couple of sessions before. I would say I had a very good, I really enjoyed the session. Uh, about a legacy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they come um, uh, had james uh, Pereira, and that was that was uh, that was very good uh, very mm -hmm. insightful i i can say legacy is a big thing in the james Latham, uh, and that that was a very big thing that i think we all need to start Thinking about uh, mm -hmm. it's also about how to, and I really like the way that it was phrased. You know, it's not just about saying what is our footprint, but what is our handprint. What mm -hmm. is that this industry creates? It's not just about the number of seats and the number of beds. It's about yeah. creating legs. It's the added value. It's what is perhaps created so that a meeting can take place and what is created because a meeting took place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, these are these mm -hmm. are all things that I think are uh, very, very important in the way that this industry needs to develop. And mm -hmm, it opens mm -hmm. up a lot of conversations. It opens up, you know, a lot of painful points. I think that uh, looking, at, looking at the you know, IMAX America, looking at IMAX in Frankfurt, looking at the meeting show now. The period of that happiness, oh, we're back live. We've done this. Mm -hmm. We are now in a position where we have to start talking about business. Exactly. And this is where things become much more complicated because there's, I would say, three things. Um, the first takeaway I would say is that we have to start looking at our industry as an industry that is strongly integrated into the global activities of the world. Mm -hmm. So what will impact this year's and especially next year's travel is the cost of the kerosene, what are the contracts going to be between the airline companies, uh, mm -hmm. what is going to be the cost of food, how do we get the food in. Um, how do people travel, how difficult it is to travel. We've all seen, you know, uh, traveling to London was not easy. One of the mm -hmm. main meetings I was trying to do uh, while here got canceled because the flight from Amsterdam to Heathrow got canceled. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I was lucky that we have a direct flight from Ljubljana, which was great, but it took us 40 mm -hmm. minutes to get, once we landed, to get to the finger because the yeah. finger was on yeah. So Definitely. that's like half of the time of, in the air, we spend just as much time on the ground waiting to disembark the plane, which, you know, just to give you a, small effects. Yeah. To give you a comment on that, yesterday I also arrived from Bulgaria again, you know, and in Vienna airport, there was not even one flight on time. All of them were delayed. So obviously there is a problem with the staff probably. Uh, and it's all over Europe. Uh, and of course, I totally agree with you. The price of kerosene is something which will definitely influence on, on our business. And it's not a joke. Yeah, <laughs> it's not and, something and, we can and, ignore. No. And, and this is this is one part that we, we don't talk about this. We don't talk about the staff at the airport being relevant to the meetings industry. Yeah, um, exactly. And, uh, you know, with, with everything that we've been doing lately, as you know, but I think that goes for the entire meetings industry. We have to stop thinking about how exclusive we are. We have to open up. We have to talk about our sporting events, actually, in most cases, association events. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, definitely. We have to, definitely. We have to start opening this conversation and saying, okay, so 
what is a corporate event is actually mm -hmm. a corporate business trip a part of the mm -hmm. business industry. I think it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, going around saying, oh, uh, let's act like it's 2019. That is the biggest mistake we can do. The mm -hmm. virtual mm -hmm. is here to stay. I mean, look at us. Look at what we are doing right now. Yeah, this is definitely. How this whole the, the and it, it, it feels okay, Jan. I don't have problem with that at all, actually. So it feels great. So we can combine different technologies to create a kind of, you know, uh, our show. So I like that very much. Uh, but coming back to the future of trade shows, uh, how does it feel then, you know, if you can wrap up, you know, because uh, you already said building up this, this uh, huge stance, it's unsustainable. It's, it's uh, about ego. Uh, it's ego driven, uh, let's say so. And uh, here is maybe um, um, a path, you know, how, how to go out of this, these problems. Because we just analyzed the situation with the uh, trade show industry in Ljubljana too, you know that. And uh, uh, it's really in, in, in deep problems. Uh, and there is no clear sign how to actually go out of this. Everybody is waiting for German uh, trade fair industry. This is a kind of, you know, the core, the hardcore of the, of the business, but uh, always the innovation is on the, on the uh, not, not in the center, you know, so basically it's always in the outside. So uh, this is a comment. What, what can you say, Jan? I, I can say this. I had a very interesting <laughs> conversation yesterday about exactly this with a colleague from Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that is a city that knows a lot about exhibitions and trade fairs and fairs. Mm -hmm. And she was very, very much intrigued in looking at what Conventa looks like. Basically, mm -hmm. when you strip away all the noise, you yes. come down to the essence of it. And that is the business. That is that meeting you want to have. That mm -hmm. is... Mm -hmm being able to talk now let me let me stand up and just show you the feel of the of the meeting show as right. you can see it's quite busy you can uh -huh. see it's very diverse there's been a lot of you know people involved in building all the stands and there's a lot of suppliers that we mm -hmm. like to say you know are not a part of the meetings industry because that is the exhibition business uh -huh. is it uh -huh. I, I think we're very we're, we're we are, we, are, we are missing an opportunity to unite, you know, and I know we, we talk about the meetings industry, but it's the events industry at the end of the day. In Slovenian language, it's a little bit more complicated, as you know. It uh, is, the yeah. perceptions yeah. also, of, you know, how, how difficult it was to talk, stop, stop talking about the Congress industry, because that's yes. even narrower. Yeah. We got to open up. We got to be more inclusive. We got to talk with different suppliers because otherwise we can we can take away one part of the equation mm -hmm. and let's say that one of these suppliers goes out of business it can influence that another supplier that is crucial for us is actually affected yeah that's true. and as as an industry we're not talking about these connections so, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. there, there's there's a very simple understanding of, you know, you have a destination, you have a convention bureau, you have the DCOs, you have the DMCs, you have the Congress Center, then you come to the caterings, then you come to the, uh, you know, eventually you come to the AV company, you come mm -hmm, to, the, mm -hmm. to the fact that everybody now knows in Europe, we've got enough buses, but we don't have the bus drivers. Yep. You know? yeah. um, there's, there's, it starts to trickle down and we've never done in Slovenia, I know we've never done it, but I think that on a European level or an industry level, we could do you know, a revision of the satellite accounts uh, analysis that we've done in the past. Uh, but Jan, you know what is my comment on that? It's really simple. If you turn the, the whole thinking about the industry towards the participant, the single participant at any kind of event, this is the core of the business. So we need to talk about events itself, about participants, and then the equation is easy, if you ask me. It's like at your concert last weekend, you know? It's about happy participants, happy audience, you know? And it's experience at the end. Uh, I don't know, maybe I simplify everything too much, but 
we are really experienced marketing uh, at the end, uh, if you want to, this is maybe too, too, uh, too narrow, but basically, I don't know how to say, but we are creating experience. We are experienced business actually. So yeah, I, 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 I couldn't I agree more. I, I, yeah. I must say I'm, I'm a little bit worried. We agree too much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'll give you I'll give you a very practical experience again from London, right? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yesterday we had an evening event at the Hard Rock Hotel, mm -hmm. and the whole Hard Rock Cafe and the whole brand actually started in London 50 years ago, and they've uh, taken over an old hotel, mm -hmm. and it's now Hard Rock, right? And they have this incredible memorabilia, and they really took us on a very interesting uh, side inspection of a hotel. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we did see only one room, but to see what the experience behind the hotel is. First of yeah. all, you get into the lobby, you mm -hmm. got all mm -hmm. this amazing, you know, memorabilia. Uh, mm -hmm. which, by the way, I have to mention, every item they would purchase is a charity purchase. So mm -hmm. all the proceeds mm -hmm. go to a charity. Very good. Um, yeah. The second part of the story is that the lobby is, you know, converted into a bar, which is mm -hmm. psychedelic mm -hmm. and has live music in it. So mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. an experience of its own. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There's sections of it. You can privatize, you can privatize everything. There's a special, you know, club for the members of, and so on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get into the room. This used to be just another hotel in many ways, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But you look at the linen and on top of the, you know, the, the, the duvet, you yeah. have guitars, little guitar shapes. You mm -hmm, look at mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. corner of the pillow, there's a little guitar there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So details by details, huh? It's the details and it's the whole story that they are trying to create mm -hmm. and the experience and that is the value and that makes me want to stay in the hotel like yeah you know, yeah it's definitely fascinating yeah it's i totally agree again you know with, with that and that's what i'm personally looking for but i was surprised to just to mention uh, coming from bulgaria you know that i'm chasing these sustainable stories wherever i go now so I would like to learn who is doing well and who is doing not so well. So, because there are a lot of greenwashing in the industry uh, all over. And I was totally surprised where I didn't expect anything. In Bulgaria, there is a resort with such a high level of sustainable development that I was really there. Uh, I, I was there uh, listening with open, open uh, mouth. Uh, totally crazy they're doing 11 things but really by the book and of course they have a iso certificate on the top of it plus the person who is dealing with that but this is a mass tourism you know it's not a boutique hotel because we always say that boutique tourism is sustainable eh? when the mass tourism is not sustainable at all but it's possible and it, it goes also to the trade shows so i mean but as you said before you, we need to take out the things which are not necessary for the success of the of the trade show but to be comments from my side i'm also i'm also afraid uh, about the uh, problems with with, with traveling uh, around europe it's getting really scary <laughs> yeah. it's it's um, i i think what what i have to ask is well what i have to say is about getting to the venue getting from the venue. I've noticed a shift in the way how logistics are done in London. You know, uh, it's in a lot of ways, there's more sustainable elements in a large city like London than mm -hmm. in smaller mm -hmm. towns. Because yeah, we have true, to yeah. take into account that the cost of, when you have a lot of people in the same room, the cost of the basic facilities is low. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, but all the logistics can be done by trains, it can be done by subways, it can be done by buses. It's, I was surprised of how many areas now are pedestrian zones. Mm -hmm. Crazy, I'm, I'm just discovering the streets that before were packed with cars are now mm -hmm. pedestrian zones. Oh, interesting, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's, 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 it's really, really interesting what 
it's happened in London. I've not been here for three years, and it changed mm -hmm. so much. And I, I find it very inspiring. I think that's very, mm -hmm. and it's very exciting to see how big cities are going in this direction mm -hmm. as well. And with the capacities that they have, with the possibilities that they have, with the attraction that they have towards you know mass tourism, mm -hmm. it's interesting how they apply that to a, on a on a completely different scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what about Ljubljana? What about the interest for, for our beautiful city, for our cool city? Uh, what can you say about that? <laughs> I'm extremely proud of you. Last week, we finally got the, you know, the, the, the award in our hands that we are the destination, European best destination to do. Uh, this was really a group effort and it's really, really wow. amazing award to have. Uh, we were looking at the numbers and the occupancy rates of the hotels are very good. Uh, we know that we are amongst the top destinations in that. And that's mm -hmm. something that I can say it's very strong related with the strengths of the meetings in the string the destination because from the veterinarian mm -hmm. conference that was happening in May, every week we had a conference with at least five or six hundred delegates with smaller events at the same time, or mm -hmm. you know, kind of picking off with velocity a couple of weeks ago. That was amazing with 1,200 mm -hmm. delegates almost. Um, you know, huge legacy of that event. Incredible yeah, stuff yeah. that was done before because, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because these events are all catalysts for change. And mm -hmm. we have some really interesting conferences taking place also this week, next week. Um, mm -hmm. Event, you know, that there's a conference at the Faculty of Social Sciences that went from 200 expected delegates to 500. Mm -hmm. Wow, and we are beating, we are beating all the numbers, all the expected numbers or desired numbers have mm -hmm. actually been beaten. And we have better mm -hmm. results, and that despite all the limitations in uh, you know accessibility that we understand. But mm -hmm. it's not an excuse that people do not come, people are eager to come. Definitely. The destination is in really high demand. So it's very exciting, yes. So you are optimistic about the future. Well, we are running out of time. As always, we have half an hour or 25 minutes, Jan. So what is your final, uh, actually, uh, conclusion about your visit to London? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still getting my head around a lot of things I've heard and seen, but I think more and more people are getting out of that cocoon of what it was like in 2019, and let's talk about 2019. And we are accepting that two years in between have come mm -hmm. and have happened and have influenced how we exist and how we will exist, and we need to adapt. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uncertainty in the world. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. Uh, but we as an industry, we have to start playing this smart. And I think yeah. that's my conclusion. That, uh, yeah, yeah let, let me add from logistics to architecture to experiences and power to the meetings. Stay tuned, tuned to our channels. We have many channels open. You can watch us on YouTube, LinkedIn, Congress Magazine and all the web portal of, of Ljubljana Convention Bureau. Thank you for listening to us and see you soon. Bye. Bye-bye.